This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green. Takes heat to make cold? Hmm, what's all that about? I have with me today Dr. Manfred Zepka, Principal of Sustainable Design and Consulting. And what he is doing is developing a new technology that's actually not so new extracting moisture from the air to make air conditioning much more efficient and he's on contract to University of Hawaii at Manoa and you know what why don't we bring the first uh, slide up please that'll uh, give us now here's the cost of doing business this is can be University of Hawaii Manoa or any downtown firm even uh, a hotel in Waikiki your main cost of doing business is the personnel. And then you have an incidental 10% and cost of energy 1%. Who the heck cares about cost of energy 1%? Well, what more and more people are doing and what Manfred is leading the way in is saying, what if we cannot deliver not only efficient energy to the building, but energy in such a way that it promotes health and wellness in the building. Now you're getting more productivity out of your, not out of your, you're delivering more productivity to your employees or you're making your hotel guests happier and so forth. So now that 1%, if you do it right, suddenly expands vastly into that 90%. So. Let's, now let me introduce uh, Manfred. Welcome to the show, Manfred, and thank you so much for coming. You were on the show about two years ago and talking about the University of Hawaii Manoa general plan for increasing efficiency. And since then, you have gone off on your own but stayed with the university and formed your own company, and it's going to be a new and exciting type of energy efficiency. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? First, you have a very, very interesting mm -hmm. background, Manfred. Well, thanks. First of all, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been really a pleasure to be on your show. I think it's such a great show for why. Very important. Mm -hmm. And you've been a leader also for the code. You're really putting the energy stuff in the front. And I really appreciate mm -hmm. being here. So what we've been doing is mostly, I have been in sustainable field for a long time only concentrating energy, trying to sell, you know, why we have to uh, save energy. Mm -hmm. But lately our focus has shifted, first of the, the work at the university, where we actually were concentrating on thermal comfort, uh, that actually there's a wellness, a wellness for buildings, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. getting more and more important. So if you want to sell something to the owner, they really respond very, very uh, positively towards mm -hmm. like increase in wellness. For instance, like, you know, if you uh, can, can uh, uh, save uh, on absentees, if you don't have to bring in new people, if you can retain talent, this is really getting to be a very important point. Mm -hmm. And just related to that is I deal with uh, people who create <coughs> LEED certified buildings and so forth. And LEED, Leadership and Energy Efficient mm -hmm. Design, goes hand in hand also with a healthy building and study after study is proving that a LEED certified building, number one, commands higher rents, number two, has greater stability within the, the leasing force. They like it there in the building and they're gonna stay in the building. Yes. Absolutely. And you know, I've been uh, right now certified as a WELL AP, I think the first in this state well here. WELL AP? What? Yes. Now what is a WELL AP? WELL AP is actually a new standard. It's called WELL, you know, building standards. Mm -hmm. It actually comes out from the LEED family. Interesting. So, I did yeah, not know that. Yeah. So what they have done is like usually LEED is for the environment. They have triple mm -hmm. bottom line. Mm -hmm. means the finances, the people, you know, the environment. This one is very much on the occupant. So it puts the occupants of a building of a, or employees mm -hmm. in the center. Mm -hmm. And that's the new threshold. I mean, that's the new frontier of green buildings. Wow. Uh, and it all ties in with energy efficiency and the management, especially of, of the HVAC, the heating, 
ventilating, air conditioning uh, system right. within the building. Yes, absolutely. And, and we've heard about uh, building sickness, remember <laughs> Legionnaire's disease of many, yes. many years ago. And a statistic that I keep coming across is the fact that we Americans, fortunately not we in Hawaii, but mainland Americans spend 90% of their time indoors and indoor air quality is significantly worse than outdoor air quality. So this business of making the indoor air in the buildings more, uh, more healthy is yeah. really, really significant for us as, as Americans and, yeah. and for our productivity. Yeah. See, there is actually might be a conflict between energy use and wellness. Mm -hmm. There was a recent uh, uh, article and it came out as Harvard Review. And they said, like, if you increase ventilation by 30 or 40 percent mm -hmm. over code, you can actually, the employer can save something in the neighborhood of $7,000 per employee mm -hmm. per year. And the cost of the increased ventilation in terms of energy use is $40. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can, it's almost a no brainer where do yeah. you go. But on the other side, if we increase more and more also with lighting, then actually wellness becomes a burden on energy use. We mm -hmm. cannot save so much. So here actually you and, and maybe also myself, their leaders, we can help just to bring these things together. We can make very healthy buildings, but we can also save energy. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, when you bring <coughs> the advantage to bringing more and more outside air into a building is that it doesn't recirculate, 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 mm -hmm. and Lord knows what it is you're recirculating. You've got a sick person coughing away in office A, and way over here in Office B, those germs might get recirculated to the person in Office uh, B. Yeah, absolutely. And also building, building materials, right? Yeah, yeah. VOCs, mm -hmm. volatile organic compounds, yeah. you know, formaldehyde or so, this kind of stuff, which we mm -hmm. have more and more. Yeah. And again, like you said, 90% indoors, 6% of the time, actually, the, the American, typical Americans in the car. Only mm -hmm. you know, 4% mm -hmm. in but you, you said like in Hawaii, we, we have a little bit different, yeah, but fortunately, still. fortunately, yeah. which is probably why we have the longest uh, living rate in, in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have other problems, and this will you probably you will address that actually we do have a, a lot of problems or potential problems with uh, humidity, which mm -hmm. can even be like mold. So, mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. this one actually we have to watch, because if, as we save more energy in buildings, these problems could get worse if we are not wisely and smartly about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Ironically, what, what we're shooting for, I'm an energy codes guy, is tighter and tighter and tighter buildings where we want to make them like thermos bottles. And the mainland in winter, if you want it warm on the inside, you have a thermos bottle of warm like a coffee mug. And uh, in our climate, if you have cold, you want to keep that cold in there, which minimizes the exchange between outdoors and indoors. And the older buildings and homes were much leakier. They just leaked in accidentally all this outside air. So ironically, the buildings were healthier that way. Yeah. Yeah. So now we have to get real scientific and say we've got a building that's tight as a drum. We need outside air. Exactly how much do we need it and of what quality do we need that, that outside air? Definitely. Yeah. I was in, involved in a, in a project and I looked at a, a building uh, it's actually a, a naturally ventilated building where they had put, uh, you know, a cool roof on mm -hmm, top. Mm -hmm. And the reason, I mean, the result was that they all of a sudden had mold mm -hmm, in the building. Mm -hmm. So it used to be cooked basically out before. Right now we have much better thermal uh, comfort, but at the expense of having like a different health issue. And mm -hmm. everybody knows you don't want to have mold no. in the house. No. Yeah, and some people are hugely allergic to mold also. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a friend of mine who's a mechanical engineer specializes in the American Southeast. And mm -hmm. he loves to go into especially lower priced motels with vinyl wallpaper. And they're having a health problem. And he has a camera on him and he'll pull back the vinyl wallpaper. And there's all these black splotches all mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. the place. This is true, and the more actually we spend indoors, you know, the more susceptible we are. Mm -hmm. Because we somehow, you know, as humans, we you know, somehow uh, uh, develop of being indoor humans. Mm -hmm. You know, we actually mm -hmm. use that. And, you know, our, our rhythm, our internal rhythm is actually not 
than what it used to be outside. Yeah. It actually yeah. has to be sustained you know, by the indoor environment. And the uh, mm -hmm. expectations and demand for indoor is becoming more and more. So therefore, wellness is so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which is one reason we, even in the energy code, stress daylighting. So people this. can have access to the outdoors <coughs> so they know when the sun is rising, when it's noon, when it's setting, and, and so yeah. forth. Yeah. Very, very, very important. Yes. This is a, uh, we've known about this for a long time, but now scientists are beginning to really, really pinpoint mm -hmm. how we can adjust the indoors to suit the outdoors that we evolved in for over 200,000 years yeah. as, as Homo sapiens. Yeah. As a matter of fact, today was in the news that three Americans mm. got you know, the Nobel Prize of doing groundbreaking work in the uh, circadian yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Cir rhythm. Yeah. Circadian rhythm. Circadian. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So you know what I didn't do was introduce you properly. You've been in Hawaii for 25 years. You have your PhD from University of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. You are a water man. You like water sports. Yes, I yeah. do. And you have, I guess, two grown daughters in California? Yes, yeah. yeah. Wonderful yeah. girls. And mm -hmm. I'm happily married. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so what can you ask more, right? Yeah, a and living in Hawaii. Yes, that's very true. Doing what, what you love to do. This yeah. is true, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go to the next slide? Yeah, we have time. And look at... now. Walk me through this, and walk, walk the audience through this. How yeah. an air conditioner works yeah. is really, really counterintuitive yeah. Yeah. here. So this is definitely a very simplified, and a lot of experts in HVAC say, hey, you know, there's much more to it. Mm -hmm. But this one actually shows the very fundamental of what we have right now as a air conditioning. You see on the left side, there's something coming in, which is outside air, has to go through a fan. We, we need a lot of fan power in a building, and as it comes to, uh, into the room, which is on the right side with the person indicated, it goes through a, a cooling coil, which is like this uh, gray thing with some droplets. And uh, once we cool air, let's say we have something like uh, outside air for 70% relative humidity, and we bring it in and cool, it would actually start to rain inside because oh. the humidity is getting so high. Now, we can understand this uh, being blessed by living on this island mm -hmm. where moisture-laden air, when we have trade winds, comes in from the northeast and hits our mountains, which are about 3,000 <coughs> feet high, yes. much, much, much cooler. Where does it rain? Up in the mountains. Same, same principle, yeah? Exactly, the yes. Moisture-laden yeah. air hits yeah. cold yeah. and condenses in, yeah. into droplets. So in order to have a healthy indoor environment for humans, we should have a relative humidity between about 35 and maybe 50 percent. Mm -hmm. So right now we are stretching it with, red, with con conventional, you know, that we go up to 60. You know, once we're getting too high in indoor humidity and we do not have ventilation over surfaces, we get mold. So, and all kinds of other stuff. It's getting mold when it's very humid and when it's very dry, you got the cough, or all kinds of allergies. So we want to keep it. The problem here is like you see a little bit to the right of this cooling coil, we have to chill down the air so much that actually, you know, uh, up to about 40 degrees, 42 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So if we don't reheat it or somehow make, you know, make sure it doesn't hit you inside, you, you get what's called an overcooled building, right? So, and that's actually, therefore, sometimes, you know, we have to reheat it in order to, and go, it goes down. And inside, the, the person which is indicated loses, like, the, uh, his uh, or her uh, internal heat, uh, either through convection, this is actually air blowing over you, we are perspiring, which is like the droplets, or we actually radiating heat against all the surface inside of the room. You see the upper, Thing, Howard, that actually is something which is called the recircling air, the recycling air. So we actually recycle about 80% of the air which actually gets into, you know, by, and then it goes again over the, uh, over the cooling coil. <laughs> you nicely said, you know, if, if one has a cough there, then, you know, it just, all, everybody gets a cough. Mm -hmm. So that, that's actually the drawback. Yeah, and so that arrow up there is con containing moist air, again, even though we have demoisturized it, that, that yellow bar is, mm -hmm. is a reheat yes. coil mm -hmm. to <coughs> 
go, yeah, yeah, because we're too cold, so it's right. reheating it to yeah. a comfortable yeah. temperature. Now it strikes us human beings, mm -hmm. and we human beings give off this moisture. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so we have to recirculate it, yes. recool it, and then reheat it again. And this has yeah. been around, you know, that for carrier development, you know, mm -hmm. invented it like over 100 years ago, yeah. and, and has yeah. not really been changed in the last 100 years. The mm -hmm. big problem, Howard, is that, you know, this, you know, reg this conventional, it combines three essential functions. It's ventilation, we have to have new outside air, otherwise, you know, we feel asleep because CO2 comes out, you know, like uh, outgassing stuff inside. It has to cool and it has to dry air. So these are three fundamental functions, or and air drying also means dehumidification, which have to be done. And it is not easy to, con basically, you cannot separately control everything. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's contradictory forces at, at it work is. here. Yeah. And on that cheery note, we need to take a brief break. Howard Wig, Code Green, here with Manfred Zupka, back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness-Mark, and every Monday at 1 o'clock, I present Think Tech Hawaii's research in Manoa, where we bring together researchers from across the campus to describe a whole series of scientifically interesting topics of interest both to Hawaii and around the world. So hopefully you can join me 1 o'clock Monday afternoon for Think Tech Hawaii's research in Manila. Living in this crazy world, so caught up in the confusion, nothing is making sense for me and you. Maybe we can find a way, there's got to be solution, how to make a brighter day. Good afternoon again, Howard Wig, Code Green, with the Honorable Manfred Zepka, Principal of Sustainable Design and Consulting, doing some very, very important work with the University of Hawaii at Manoa in reforming the way we air condition our buildings. This is old technology, but has a whole new, much more sophisticated twist. So welcome back again. Manfred. Thank you. Thanks again for having me. And let's bring up, we, we got to the description of the conventional air conditioning. Now let's get to this new old uh, system. <coughs> and again, this is not new stuff. You've just put some new twists on it. Yeah. Yes, this is yeah. true, actually. You know, we are using what is called a liquid desiccant. And you probably, have, all of you have seen, like when you get new uh, uh, electronic stuff, you have a little packs in there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These are desiccants, but they are solid desiccants. And, and uh, the function of a desiccant is to? Suck up humidity, yep. you know? And, but it sucks up humidity without the need of cooling it way down. So what we actually have in, in the very, you know, important and, and, and differentiator is that we can differentiate between dehumidification, which is ventilation and air drying, and sensible cooling. Sensible cooling, not because it's, you know, like, it's like sensible means that you can feel it. You, you can sense it. You can sense it, yeah. exactly. The other one is called latent. Well, what does latent mean? And it's like hidden or whatever. So that's actually the energy you need to dehumidify. And again, like whenever you bring outside air here in Hawaii, into a space, you have to dry it. Otherwise, you get humidity problems. And, and mold, you, you have to stuff. dry it because the comfort range for humans and uh, to keep the microbes away is between, what, 35 and 60 and percent? You should have 35 to 50. 35 60 is already a little bit yeah, high. It's yeah, it's right on the margin. And <coughs> our typical relative humidity in Hawaii is? Outside 70, 70. at night 85. And then when we have Kona weather like we're having today or have had, then it goes up from there. <laughs> it's very, very, yeah. you know. Yeah, as, uh, especially yesterday, I think we could really feel it. Yeah. I tell the temperature you, yes. wasn't so high, but mm -hmm. I don't know about yeah. other people, but I was really yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uncomfortable. And that was because of the, the high humidity, which mm -hmm. is why we need to 
use a desiccant to remove that moisture so we feel sensibly a lot yes. more comfortable. Wh which relates, you know, people joke about uh, Las Vegas being hot. Everybody would say yes, but it's a dry heat. And that actually has some merit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And again, like, you know, whenever we have a dry indoor climate, mm -hmm. the advantage is we don't have to cool down the, the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, the indoor air. Because specifically here, which we call, which we call adaptive cooling or adaptive mm -hmm. comfort mm -hmm. is, we outside, we know actually in Hawaii, we don't have to have it so cold. So typically you see in air-conditioned room that actually the temperature is too cold. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have to, you know, bring the sweaters yeah. and they're yeah. just yeah. freezing, you know. So that's the drawback. In, in our system, we can actually mm -hmm. separate, we can cool, we can control the, the temperature, air temperature, and mm -hmm. also the humidity independently. Yeah. Can we go back to the, uh, the slide now, please? We're, we're working our way through this. this is Quite fascinating. Okay. So you see on the left side, which is called like the desiccant drying and the desiccant regeneration. So in the desiccant drying, air is actually going through something like a lattice. It's almost like a, 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 an air, you know, cooler in the car, something mm -hmm. which is going through. So there it gives, gives actually off the humidity. The desiccant virtually sucks it in. And then afterwards, we, of course, have to re regenerate it because we cannot always use new desiccant. So, and the nice thing actually is we can use solar heat in order to drive out, you know, the humidity. So the nice thing here actually, we don't have to overcool the internal of the building. And uh, so that's actually, that's the part of the humidity and we can control it very, very nicely. On the other side, what Howard was indicating, we have the cooling. And if we have like very low humidity, we don't have to cool it down so much. Mm -hmm. There comes actually your ceiling fans. You know, mm -hmm. ceiling fans do not uh, work very well in conventional, you know, air conditioning because it might be too cold and it, it's a draft. So actually, how do we bring then the cooling? And we have different possibilities. On the right side, this blue box there with a big, you know, uh, uh, electricity uh, uh, symbol. It's a conventional chiller. We can use it. And the advantage is you, you, you might need about 30 or 35 percent of the, the, the electricity you need now because we don't have to chill it down. And if a chiller doesn't have to make like 40 Fahrenheit uh, uh, cold water, it doesn't have to work so hard. Mm -hmm. So we save energy also there by, by removing the same kind of amount of heat. On the left side where you see the solar here is that actually is something which is called absorption chillers, which work, you know, what you indicated, you, have, you use heat in order to, to create cold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we could really use solar to a big extent. The thing in the middle, how it, I added, because this one is seawater cooling, which mm -hmm. is very, you know, in, very interesting for here. I worked on, you know, like 15 years ago, we worked mm -hmm. on some initial concept. But here, usually seawater cooling needs this long pipe which go very deep. Mm -hmm. If we use, for instance, desiccant re rehumidification, is we can make the pipe much shorter. The, the amount of cold uh, water comes down, so you probably can save about 70% of your, your, your cost for the seawater cooling system, and you could still use the, the natural cooling effect of the, of the seawater. So the, the, the important thing here, we can separate you know, dehumidification from cooling, and this actually is getting a very good uh, wellness factor because air quality is very good, and thermal comfort is cool. So the, mm -hmm. the value proposition will not be that we can actually save a lot of energy that we can create. We basically can, you know, uh, uh, custom make our internal, uh, uh, internal uh, 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 thermal comfort mm -hmm. and environment mm -hmm. air, air quality. And in terms of health and humidity, uh, as I understand it, mold or any organism that likes to hang around <laughs> indoors starts to grow right around 60% relative humidity. And then the more moist it is up from there, the more readily it grows. Mm -hmm. And yeah, this is true. Yeah. The, one of the, we've discussed the fact that indoor air quality is very poor, often very yeah. poor compared to outdoor air quality. Yeah. And one big reason for that could be the growth of organisms. Definitely. In there, yeah. yeah. Especially also how if you have high indoor air quality, 
a lot of harmful materials they air mm -hmm. out much easier, you know, mm -hmm. than more, more point, readily yeah. than in, 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 in dry climate. Mm -hmm. So dry climate also, you everybody has here like a computer, and in, in high high humidity uh, uh, air, like at home, you look at the back, you know, and it's all rusty. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, no, my mm -hmm. goodness, it just will fail. And in dry climates, actually, the rust is not, is way, way less. Yeah, we, so. which makes uh, co common sense, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you said that when we are in a high humidity environment, we need to get the water temperature down to around 40, 40 F. When we're in a very dry environment, say go down to 35 percent humidity, what, what kind of temperature can we deliver? Well, this is the, the old tile, air. right? The old mm -hmm. tile, the, the conventional air, what we mm -hmm. discussed. In the conventional air conditioning, we have to chill down up to 40 mm -hmm. or 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. It's very, very cold. Then the air goes over these coils, goes mm -hmm. through that. So the air, the, the humidity is condensing, like mm -hmm. condensation, mm -hmm. right? And then afterwards, it's so cold, when we bring it in, we have to reheat it. Mm -hmm. And in our system, you bring in the air, and it, you don't have to chill yeah. it down. Be By the way, actually, it actually gets a little bit hot. So you have to remove some air, uh, some heat. Mm -hmm. So you actually can bring the air into your building with, uh, with our system, which is neutral. Let's mm -hmm. say you want to have 80, 80 degrees Fahrenheit, because if you have lower, lower humidity, mm -hmm. you can actually be very comfortable at about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And if you add your ceiling fan, it's even better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Oh my goodness. We have one minute left and we just barely, barely gotten. So in a real quick nutshell, what are you and uh, UH Manoa doing about this? Are they they're funding this program? Yes. Or, yeah. uh, actually, I didn't uh, uh, credit. Actually, mm -hmm. I do work with HNEI, Jim mm -hmm. Maskery, and mm -hmm. I'm also working with, uh, and our team is uh, Steve Meader and Eileen mm -hmm. Pepar. Mm -hmm. We actually a very good team, you know, very, very uh, uh, good results for relatively small resources mm -hmm. we have. And we're actually working on the next front, I think, you know, and it's very Ooh. exciting. And again, like the value proposition of what we're doing is first of all, we can save a lot of energy. On the other side, we can create wellness. Wellness, yes, and we go back to that first pie chart, 90% cost personnel let's keep that personnel nice and healthy and well and productive and on that cheery note we need to bid fond farewell to Manfred Zepka and we will see you next time thank you very much for viewing